Welcome, my name is Paul Gregory and this is video 3 in the series on looking at migrating from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012. This one's going to look at actually migrating the system volume. Now a lot of people have upgraded uh, the main controllers from one version to another over the years but uh, one of the things a lot of people might not be aware of is that the technology that's used to replicate the system volume where all your group policies, your login scripts are stored um, uses a technology called File Replication Service or FRS. This is depreciated in Windows Server 2012 R2. So it's going to be quite important to ensure that we migrate this service across to DFSR. So even if your source platform was 2008, 2008 R2, you still might need to go through these steps. And the steps would basically be exactly the same. As always, my contact details are on the screen. Please feel free to email me, uh, keep in touch through Twitter or follow me on Twitter. Please look at my other videos on YouTube. And if there's a, an, a video which you think would be useful, so you'd like to know how to do something, then please feel free to contact me and I'll see if I can do something uh, in that area. So, as I say, this is video three in the series. So hopefully you've seen video one, which is really just an introduction to the environment. Uh, video two, where we actually migrated Active Directory and DNS onto Windows Server 2012. So this is taking over from that and then completing the file replication to DFSR migration. Video 4 looks at uh, migration of DHCP and then the last video, migration of a file server. So again, because we're using the uh, conversion of the file replication service, even though we've actually decommissioned QADC01 and QADC02, we're still effectively looking at what we'd regard as a legacy service from the point of view of those machines. So we are going to really just be focusing on DC03 and DC04 um, but it's part of that whole Active Directory migration process. So we just switch over to the desktop of my virtual machine and we'll open a command prompt on QADC03 and we will use the DFSR MIG utility to find out what our current migration status is. So by looking at the help, you can see that we get a get migration state command which will report back what our migration status is. Not here, we haven't started, so we shouldn't see that we're completed. And significantly what you'll notice, it actually tells us that we need to be in at least Windows Server 2008 domain functional level. So we'll go and use the Active Directory Domains and Trust tool to actually go and raise our domain functional level. Now this has been left exactly as it was from the previous video. So we still are in Windows Server 2003 mode, and we could raise obviously higher, but we're just going to go to 2008. So having raised the uh, domain functional level, we could effectively uh, proceed from that point, but what I'm going to do as well is I'm actually going to raise the forest functional level at the same point in time as well. Now again, in terms of the actions that I'm about to perform here, these are things that you would perform over a number of hours. So effectively, you will notice there's some latency with some of the things that we're going to execute. So hopefully if we run the get migrations state command, you will actually see that basically it says um, you've not started migration and you need to set the global state to the, a desired value. So what is the migration global state? Well, this is a, a numerical value that you can set, which will allow you to um, specify which migration phase you want to be in. And effectively, we're in the start phase, so zero. Uh, so we need to go into prepared, redirected, and then effectively eliminated. And when you get into the eliminated state, you cannot undo effectively what, what you've done to get to this point. So we need to use the set global state to start the migration process. So before we do that, we'll just go and have a quick look inside Explorer, and we will see in Explorer, as normal, we have the standard sysvol volume. So this is what we're effectively going to migrate from using uh, the file replication service across to DFSR. So we'll use the <coughs> uh, or get global state command just to see what our current state is. So effectively, we've not yet initialized the migration phase. So we'll use the set global state uh, parameter on the DFS R MIG utility to actually go and uh, start the migration process. So we'll go and use the set global state and we'll set it to a value of, of one as we saw in the list before. So effectively, we're now going to enter the uh, state of prepared, at which point what will happen is the domain controllers will be told to effectively create a copy of the system volume folder and copy it to a folder called sysvol underscore dfsr. So 
If we was to go into um, Explorer, eventually we should see this folder appear. When we actually start to enable replication, what we will also see is we will actually start to see inside the DFS management tool a copy of that replication object. So there's nothing really to see at this moment because it takes a little while for the sysvol folder to be created. So I'm actually just going to um, move the system uh, onto the next state. So just by doing a, a get uh, global state, we can see that the prepared has been succeeded. If there was a domain controller that was failing to have received the instruction, then we would be told about that domain controller. So I'm just going to set the global state to two. So two actually moves the global state to redirected. So effectively what that should mean is um, the share folder will be moved onto the sysvol underscore DFSR. So client will start using the sysvol underscore DFSR folder through the sysvol share rather than actually the old sysvol uh, folder. So at this point, if you needed to, you could still effectively roll back. You could still undo uh, and switch back to the old file replication service mechanism if you wanted to. So what we're going to do here is we'll just go to the final stage and we will use the set global state. So effectively, we do get told you know, this is not possible to revert and we've now actually com effectively completed the migration. So what we need to do is go and perform some checks just to go and make sure that everything's working okay. So we can see that as far as the DFSR MIG tool is concerned, we are now in the succeeded state. Um, if we go into various utilities, hopefully we should see the uh, setup. Now I've done this very quickly. As I say, you would normally do this uh, over an extended period of time. So it might just take a little while for some of the uh, boxes to actually update with the correct information. So let's just go and have a look and see if the sysvol DFSR folder has appeared. And yes, it is. There it is. So effectively, you can see the old system volume's gone, and we now have the new sysvol DFSR. If we go into the DFS management console, hopefully what we should see is we should now see the domain uh, services volume actually being replicated. So you can see DFS is now responsible for keeping those volumes in sync. If I was to go and use the net share command, you can now see the net logon and the sysvol shares now point to this new folder structure that's been created. So those figures or values have actually been updated. If we want to, we could go in uh, obviously test. So effectively, I could go into the group policy management console. Uh, I could, for example, go and create a new test group policy, and I could just confirm that that gets replicated across all of my domain controllers. So we'll just call it GPO to uh, test uh, DFSR, hopefully, to the replication. And we will then just confirm that does get replicated to QADC04. So if we use the diagnostic tool built into the group policy management, you can currently see that we've actually got one domain controller basically with a group policy that's outstanding. Okay, so there's obviously waiting for some changes to be processed. If we now do a detect now again, you can see that there's no domain controllers in progress, but actually they're all in sync. If we was to switch back to the DFSR utility, because we are using the DFSR utility, we can use the reporting engine inside this management tool as well. So this just running the basic health report would allow me to see how healthy the actual migration has been. So again, I'm running this really, really quickly. Most of this is happening, you know, in real time. I've completed this whole activity, you know, in under seven minutes. Um, so, so effectively, yes, I've got a couple of warnings just where the system's stabilizing. Those warnings will age out the system. Uh, but if you wanted to, obviously, you can expand those warnings, drill into them, you know, if they don't clear themselves up after half an hour, an hour of uh, sort of run, running with the system. But we've tested replication and we've seen that actually replication's occurring okay. So, you know, we can be pretty comfortable that everything's behaving. You know, maybe the only other test you would do is make sure that clients can pick up group policies and they're connecting to the shared folder correctly. But I'm not too worried about those. I would let the system stabilize before I actually um, started to investigate if there was a, a bigger problem. 
So hopefully that sort of you know concludes actually sort of doing the migration, you know, just testing the the, the, mig the migration steps. If you did actually go and build a domain controller uh, running 2012 from scratch, or a brand new 2012 domain, you wouldn't get this DFSR folder. You know, you just see the Sysvol folder. Here we're just going to double check that actually that group policy we just created has physically replicated. So it's that one with the 7E number. So we can see that it's on QADC03. I just want to confirm that it's actually been replicated to QADC04. So we will just go and connect to that via a share and we should see the group policy is actually on that machine as well. So we can see the group policies there successfully. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it uh, beneficial and useful. Again, please keep in touch and hopefully I'll see you on one of my later videos. Thank you very much.